Well, let's get started planning our distributed SharePoint 2013 BI farm configuration. To get started, let's talk about where to get the information you need in order to complete your deployment successfully. The product documentation is actually pretty good. You should definitely read it. Please don't use these videos as your source or sole source of documentation, and please, please don't use search engines as your source of documentation of how to install SharePoint. Do read the documentation. It has valuable information that you probably won't find anywhere else, and it's the documentation that's going to be updated and kept the most current. Also, pay attention to system requirements. The system requirements for SharePoint are published and should be taken seriously. Just because you attended a class where you installed SharePoint with very small VMs with a couple gig of RAM doesn't mean that you should necessarily use that kind of a configuration for your production or even for your staging installation. The VMs that we'll use today are actually look like this. So for the most part, they are 12 gigabyte VMs, um, one of the database servers has 24 gig, uh, the web front ends are 8 gig. So you should really be considering this type of profile for a SharePoint environment that will be used by more than one or two people. So keep that in mind. And again, these requirements are fairly well documented on the Microsoft TechNet sites. So with that, let's talk about the environment we're actually going to build. The farm topology that you see here is really typical of an initial medium farm that's built for a BI deployment at a commercial organization or of some other organization that has uh, a, a fair number of people uh, that are going to be accessing the farm. The reason to set up a farm like this where you have multiple servers doing different roles is because that leads us to a great deal of scalability and enhanced manageability. So we can really control which server is running which service so that as certain services begin to demand more resources we can add additional servers into the farm in order to handle that scaling demand. So what you see on the screen here is that we have a web front end on the very top and that's what end users actually uh, communicate with with their web browsers. This farm is designed so that even though I'm going to start with one web front end, I can easily scale that to others, which means I need to have some kind of a DNS CNAME record or an A record pointing at the farm. If I set my web front end up with just a server name, then that's a problem because when I want to scale out to multiple web front ends, I, I, I really can't because that server owns that name that users are putting in their browser. So we do want to use some kind of a DNS name on, on the front of this. In this case, I've got SharePoint.cur.local, which is within a lab environment uh, that I use. And uh, as you can see in the dotted lines, as the farm gets bigger, I can just add additional web front ends. The application layer is similarly designed in that I have two application servers in this medium, small, medium kind of farm size. I'm going to put my central admin and search services and you know various kinds of things um, on the app server number one. Uh, and, and then on app, app two, I'm going to dedicate to my BI services. And I'm doing that intentionally so that if, for example, my users start to really hammer my BI services, that it's not going to slow down everything that's going down in the farm. So my search is still going to work, my pages are still going to load, and then maybe I have some slowdown on the BI side that I can resolve with additional servers. In the database layer, I, I have three database servers in this environment, and there, there's a reason for that because because I want to show you how to deploy Power Pivot on a standalone server and some different things. But essentially, SharePoint needs some kind of a database server where it's going to store its content, and then you'll need to put your BI content somewhere. I recommend maybe not putting those on the same server because again, if your BI uh, queries and that workload begins to saturate the server, you don't really want that to slow down everything that's going on in SharePoint. So a little bit of partitioning here is a very wise thing. And in this case, we have uh, SPDB1, which will hold the SharePoint content database. It's essentially, SharePoint kind of owns that database instance, and that is on its own VM or its own server. SPDB2 has my data warehouse and uh, a multi-dimensional analysis services instance, another tabular instance of analysis services. So that's kind of my core BI server for my organization. So you can think of it kind of in that way. And then SPDB3 is a dedicated server for Power Pivot for SharePoint, which will not be a part of the SharePoint farm as it would have been in SharePoint 2010, but will actually be a standalone database server, but still be used by the SharePoint farm to run the Power Pivot workbooks and which is essentially the analysis services in SharePoint mode.